Candidiasis, or human yeast. Uh, this particular situation uh, is one of the more epidemic in the fact that most people walk around with it and have no idea what it is. And again, it is more common in ladies than men, although that's not to say that men do not have yeast problems. They do. They have athlete's foot, jock itch, various other things. Uh, women tend to have more symptoms due to their physiology. Women are obviously more susceptible to vaginal yeast infections uh, than men are uh, urethra infections, for example. And that's just simply because of the way you're built physically. That's just another one of those lucky things. Um, all of us have systemic candida. No, pardon me. All of us have candida albicans. Uh, some of us end up with systemic candidiasis because we have neglected certain basic health issues. Candida albicans exists in our intestinal tract. Therefore, if you go and ask for a medical test for it, first of all, you'll be laughed at. Second of all, if you can convince anybody to do it, you will test positive because we all have it. So it, it basically, it's pointless. And it doesn't seem to do anybody any harm as long as it's in the gut lining. It's when it gets out and gets into your bloodstream and takes off that you have now a condition called systemic candidiasis. Why would this occur? Prolonged use of antibiotics which destroy the healthy bacteria, allowing the candida albicans to explosively multiply. Then spilling out into your vaginal region, spilling out into your bloodstream, and there you go. Um, birth control pills. Another big problem as far as systemic candida goes, uh, because they destroy the healthy bacteria. Any woman who decides she needs to be on birth control to keep her husband um, should always take uh, a good probiotic, I mean a good one, and a lot of it every day. Um, steroid drugs, uh, severely depressed immune system, uh, loss of gut lining integrity, um, Crohn's disease, colitis, diverticulitis, anything that's going to cause an irritation of the colon and cause bleeding, well that yeast has then got a perfect direct route into your bloodstream. Um, once it's in your system, common places where it, it, it will settle in and grow uh, would be the lungs, the sinuses, digestive system, uh, and even the brain. Uh, it, it can proliferate in brain fluid. Um, and once it's systemic, all the conventional means of dealing with this problem, so we're talking about the diflucans and the, and the, the candida diet, which is the most worthless thing ever developed, um, are ineffective. Then we have to treat it in a slightly different way. So let's take a look at some of the symptoms of systemic candida because it's the only way you can figure out if you have this problem or not because you can't test for it. Fatigue and lethargy, poor memory, feeling spacey and out of touch with your environment, depression, burning and tingling, especially of the hands and feet, muscle weakness, muscle aches, uh, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, or alternating back and forth is a very common sign. Uh, bloating, odorous vaginal discharge, vaginal itching and burning, loss of libido, premenstrual problems, blurred and erratic vision, inability to concentrate and focus, oral rash and blisters, we now call that oral thrush, nasal ear and itching, and in men, repeated prostatitis or prostate infections. Now, again, if you've got one or two of these, you probably don't need to panic. But, if I again just described your life, um, you might want to take uh, our full, uh, complete self-test. Uh, and that is uh, available from our website, and we'll give you that at the end. Because uh, you can access the, the complete test and take it at home and find out. And the higher you score, obviously, on this test, uh, the more likely a systemic yeast is your problem. If, in fact, you do have a systemic yeast problem, I urge you to take care of that first. Get that cleaned up first, because Systemic yeast over time can mimic so many other problems. It can cause adult onset allergies that really aren't allergies at all. Uh, it can cause you to be hypersensitive to smells, odors, things in your environment. Uh, it can cause repeated sinus infections for which you take more antibiotics and create more yeast problems. Uh, and so if you have this problem, the best thing to do is to get that under control first. And then let's talk about an ongoing health building program. Okay, now how do we do that? We do that by oral oxygen. We have a formula that you can take orally that will raise your blood oxygen 
uh, to above 96% and keep it there for two to four hours at a time. And we do that several times a day over several weeks. This slowly but surely destroys the candida organism because it is anaerobic in nature and it does not like and cannot thrive in an oxygen-rich environment. And the beautiful thing about oxygen is it goes to every single cell of your body, including the brain, because all cells need oxygen for life. And so we are, we are attacking it wherever it may be hiding. Once we get finished with that, we re-implant the healthy bacteria. And then, if necessary, we boost the immune system because some people have had systemic yeast problems for so long that their immune system has now been beaten up so badly that they start catching every opportunistic infection around. So then we have to rebuild that, which is quite easy to do. Uh, then, of course, like all of our health building programs, we urge people to eat a diet of whole foods, even though it has very little nutrients, but it's better than nothing. Um, and then take what we call a full spectrum product, which we'll talk about in a bit.